Welcome to Hardware Asylum. I recently picked up a bunch of really, really old hard drives, and they're all micro science. These are MFM and RLL drives. The first one I got was the model HH725A. And this is a very old drive that had one of the external servos. And it turns out that the drive works, but it won't power on by itself. So if I move the control board out, and then spin the motor at just the right point, it will continue spinning. And I was able to format the drive, F-disk it, and actually run some benchmarks that didn't really ever complete. But I never expected it to. At around the same time, I also picked up a Microscience HH1060. When I went to go and test this drive, the motor would spin up on its own, but the heads never activated. And I was really annoyed by that, thinking, well, the drive must be dead, or maybe there's just something wrong with it. So I decided to table it for a bit, and then along came this killer deal where I picked up eight Microscience half height drives. When I got the drives here in the lab, I decided to, you know, test them. I wanted to see if they would work. As I was testing the drives, two of the control boards caught on fire. And it turns out that they were all of a specific revision. Now this is one that I went and recapped because it blew this capacitor here. Nice big fireball, stunk really, really bad. But it was one of these tantalidium or whatever capacitors. Now this board on this side already has the electrolyte capacitors that have been replaced. But this is a different revision. If we look, this is revision 45001. And now these are on the HH1050 and HH1060 drives. And this one is revision 3307. Now I'm not sure what the difference is, although there is some physical changes between the two. I'm going to assume that this is the newer revision, and this is going to be an older one. And strangely enough, these are the ones that blew up. And it's really interesting when you start digging into these drives to determine, you know, what changed over the five or ten years that these drives were actually being used a lot. And it turns out that they made improvements all the time. And they made improvements when they were being manufactured. For instance, if you look at this board, there's a patch wire that got run underneath this microcontroller to connect to this IC. Now, one of the other boards I pulled off of a drive, this is also a revision 45100. And it has the same electrolytic capacitors here, but they weren't bent over like these ones, they're actually standing up straight. Now, as I was testing these drives, I already mentioned that two of them had caught on fire, and so far, only one of the drives out of the lot worked to the point where it would power on, allow me to get into debug to go and do a low-level format. It turns out that the platters on that drive um, are damaged beyond repair. And I, I messed with it for a couple of days, and couldn't get anything to align to the point where it was saying there was an error at zero, which was basically the very front of the drive where it really needs to set the fat table and all the other important stuff. And that's when I started messing around with swapping parts. So each one of these I've, I've numbered based off of what board I pulled it off of and what I did. This is recap on drive four. And it turns out that the one drive that I had that I mentioned that would spin up but it wouldn't do anything, if I pulled the control board off of a 1050 that wouldn't activate the heads that get locked up, I put that on my 1060 and it works perfect. I was able to F-disk, format, did a surface test, have one bad block on the drive. I was like, that is a success. That is pretty awesome. I have a 1050 that when you power it on, the heads go nuts. It sounds like there's something loose inside, so I was like, well, that's going to be a bad drive because there's something physically wrong with the internals. I have another 1050 that that's the one I pulled the control board off to fix my 1060. I set that one aside, but when I did power that up, it would spin up and then it would try to activate the heads, make a couple clunks, and then it would power down. Now that's because there's something wrong with the power on sequence, and it's really just a protection built into the drive to keep it from damaging itself. And that condition exhibited itself on three drives, including this one that we have on the test bench right here.
Now that noise you heard is the mechanical auto park. And that's a system designed and patented by Microscience. It uses a cam, a solenoid, and a spring to go and lock the heads in place. When the power goes off, the heads go all the way forward and it locks them in place so that it doesn't have to be parked using a command. And to unlock it, the power on sequence goes and spins up the drive when it gets to a certain RPM. It issues a head seek and also activates the solenoid to unlock the heads. They move out of the way and at that point the power on sequence is complete. The drive will work great. Now I took the lid off of this drive and I manually unlocked the heads so that they would move around on their own. When I would power on the drive, it will spin up, it'll activate the heads. I was able to do a low level format, an F disk, and a format with a surface scan, plus a scan disk, everything you're supposed to do, at least within the Windows environment. It found no bad blocks. It's a perfect drive. The only problem is, with the solenoid not working, it won't activate the heads on its own, and I kind of want to have the auto park feature enabled. So, what we're going to do is take this replacement solenoid, pull this drive apart, replace it, put it back together, and hopefully we'll have a perfectly working hard drive. Now if this drive looks a little funny, it's because I removed the cage. These old hard drives would sit in a cage and they're, they're basically rubber mounted, just like a Harley Davidson for that matter. And then you have the faceplate that goes on the front, there's an LED plug-in here that will interface the front of the control board. There's where the LED plugs in. These are some pins for controlling the heads. Over on this side we have some more pins to control the heads and I think the voice coil. And then on this side here we have a set of wires that controls the motor. But let's get started on this. First thing we got to do is disconnect it. MFM and RLL hard drives have a data and a tag ribbon and they slide like an old five and a quarter floppy like that The headlock solenoid is down in that region. To activate the solenoid, it comes in off of this ribbon and goes into this pin header, which then will loop down underneath this piece. This is actually on a spring, and that provides pressure to the bearing, which is under here. And then there's a couple more bearings that are down in this region down here. And then here's the voice coil. This is what moves the head straight up and down. It's different than the modern IDE drives that actually swing from this corner. This one goes straight up and down, a lot like the servo MFM drives from way back when. Here's a spring. This is the wire that goes to the solenoid, which is down here in the bottom.
there's our solenoid right there. Here's our spring. And then this piece right here is the cam that locks the head in place. So once this comes back, it's allowed to swing this way and the heads will come down. The two solenoids are slightly different, but they are about the same size. This one has had a square cover on it, this one's more round. Distance is the same, so it should work just fine. Okay, now that the control board is on, getting these pins to hook up is a little difficult sometimes. And the best way to tell if they are making good contact is to check continuity. Seems good. That one's important because that's a ground. Okay, let's test it out. Stripe always goes toward the power. Like so. Perfect.
Yeah, it's actually loading some uh, details off of this drive. Just booted off the hard drive, and I'm going to say that this is totally a success.